Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-21. In our last episode, the party had finished burying the dead fishermen and the bandits that had attacked them. While deciding on a plan of action, Grish finally came clean with the concerns of his liege, but was proved unfounded as the party was dedicated to keeping the land safe. We continue now with the adventurers on the road to a small village in the Northlands. Maybe it would be helpful if you stayed on the horse, chided Yolanda Two Blades. The gnome got back onto his feet, standing next to one of the appropriated horses the bandits had used. He smacked the dirt off his clothing and snapped, I'm trying. You know, I'm used to riding ponies, not these, these behemoths. For crying out loud, these things can even support the weight of Grish. The rest of the party chuckled at the remark, and Sir Omel moved his horse close enough that he could pick up Phidias and hoist him onto the back of his leather saddle. There. Try and hang on better, said the Knight of Bacchus. The rogue readjusted his clothing and pointed out, Thanks, I think you stretched my knickers into my throat. Harris and Stance had moved in front of the column and were keeping an eye out for danger. Smoke ahead, yelled out Brother Stance. The rest of the group quickly composed themselves with Yolanda asking if there was a problem or if it was friendly. Looks like a village, said the mage. A small one. But with night falling, maybe we can grab a bed or two. Phidias quickly followed up the statement with, And a hot meal, too. And maybe some wine. And maybe some women. The group moved down the trail, passing a sign denoting that they had arrived at Wagmar Village. Walking their horses in to the linear community, they noticed laughter and music coming from one of the sprawling buildings near the center of town. A hitching post was present, with several animals lashed to a horizontal tree trunk used to keep the animals from fleeing. Sounds like a party, remarked the monk from the Verte order. Phidias inhaled deeply and smiled broadly. Aye, but it smells like liquor. He charged into the establishment, passed a sign showing it to be the granary. Yolanda waited for the others to go in and then looked at the Knight of Bacchus and quipped, what do you think? The bold warrior finished lashing his mount to the felled tree and said, This time I agree with Phidias. I could use a drink. And he too strode past the female. Grish and Yolanda looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. Grish held the door open and stated, After you, milady. A half-hearted curtsy followed as the pair entered the well-lit tavern. As their eyes adjusted to the change in scenery, they spotted Harris and Stance obtaining a table near the corner by a fireplace, while Omel and Phidias were at the bar attempting to gain food and beverage. Looks like everyone in town is here, remarked Yolanda. Grish nodded his head to the far side of the building and said, My guess is that's the reason. The female warrior looked to the opposite side and noticed a group of musicians speaking with a well-dressed half-elven fellow. Bard, she asked to which she received a murmured mm -hmm, from the cleric. As they snaked their way through the crowd, the large Zenobian had to apologize several times as his big frame caused him to bump into several patrons, none of whom took offense at the accidental contact. As the pair reached the table, Omel and Phidias arrived as well, carrying trays of food and drink. As they put down the nourishment, Grish plopped down into a chair and a loud creak was heard as the device strained under the large man's frame. With everyone looking at him, Phidias reached over and pulled the tray of food away from the cleric. Removing temptation and helping your seat out, remarked the diminutive gnome. I'll remove more than your temptation if I don't get some food in my belly, said Grish. Everyone grabbed food and drink, and Phidias ordered another round of each from a chesty young barmaid with crossed eyes. 
When she returned, Brother Stance whispered something to her in her ear, and she replied in kind, bending over deeply, showing a great deal of cleavage. With a smile on his face, Sir Omel cleaned some ale froth off his uh, mustache. Thought you monks didn't enjoy the fairer sex, causing everyone to grin. The stoic monk took a long pull from his flagon and smiled back. Everyone appreciates beauty when they find it, old friend. But of course, I was asking about a room. Harris spit alcohol out of his mouth at the statement and wiped his lips off on his robe. I just bet you were, Stance, causing the member of the Verte Order to turn a very bright shade of blush. A room at the inn, you horse's ass, replied the monk as he took another drink. He continued with, apparently there's an establishment called the Blossom Inn on the far side of town that accommodates travelers. The group looked at each other, hoisted their cups, and said in unison, Blossom, laughing. Again, the monk blushed loudly, muttering, I hate you guys. The minstrels then moved up to the raised dais to begin their presentation. The half-elf stepped up in front of them and announced himself as Cade Brightwood, Bard of Heroes, to which everyone in the establishment clapped loudly. Thank you, thank you very much. Tonight, my associates and I will be giving you several musical numbers and a few stories. We hope you enjoy. After nearly two hours, the show finally ended and the party's table was covered in empty trays and cups. As the citizens filtered out, the group were feeling quite relaxed. Hey, uh, <clears throat> who's paying for all this? asked Harris, the mage. Phidias pulled forth a black leather bag with a strange design stitched into it. I believe our attackers will be footing the bill for our dinner. Stance, could you go rescue your girlfriend from the charming bard, so that I may pay her for her services? The monk flushed again and began to stammer out a rebuke, which was drowned out by everyone's laughter. He stomped over to the stage and stood with the pair for a few minutes. After speaking with the barmaid, she came over to the table while the monk and the bard continued to talk. The young woman stepped up and asked if there was anything else needed. Phidias patted her on the hand and thanked her for her excellent service. Will this cover it, my young beauty? He said as he handed over the leather bag as it jingled with a large number of coins. Oh yes, my lord, it is too much. You earned it, my dear. You took excellent care of us. She bent down to the waist, thanking him again, causing Yolanda to inspect her own chest. The examination caused Harris the mage to burst into laughter, earning him an elbow to the ribs. The young woman looked intently at the bag and asked if they missed their friend friend asked grish she replied in the affirmative and pointed out to a now empty table he was right over there he had the same bag as you are you not friends the group shook their heads and began to pepper her with questions about the man with the leather bag until the tavern owner yelled for her to get the tables cleaned as the party began to discuss the other stranger brother stance returned to the table with cade everyone this is master bard cade brightwood he has something interesting to tell us. The group shook the bard's hand and gave him credit for an enjoyable evening. He thanked the adventurers profusely and shocked them all by stating, So, you're looking for the northern noble? I believe I can help you out. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bard's Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.